Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch with some great news if you are a Linux gamer or developer, and that is that Wine 4.0 is here. Now, Wine has been under development for the last year, and this is a pretty huge deal, especially if you are a gamer on Linux platforms. So what exactly is Wine? Well, Wine is an emulator. All right, sorry, I just did that to trigger the people that wait for that. Wine literally stands for Wine is not an emulator. That's the W, Wine, I is not an, and I don't know where the and went, E emulator. So that's what Wine is all about. Wine is a compatibility layer for running Windows software on mostly Linux platforms, but it's also available for Android and Mac OS these days. Um, but this translation layer, one of the areas where it previously used to struggle with was games and multimedia. So, so you have to kind of re-implement DirectX to make things work properly across platforms. And there is one thing that Wine 4.0 is huge about in its development. It's basically this one implemented, Wine 4.0 implements Vulkan support, and through Vulkan support, it implements DirectX 12 support or at least starts to. Uh, so this is a huge development for gamers running on Linux platforms. Now this might kind of sound sort of familiar and that's because um, Valve released Proton in well, August 21st, I did the video about it, so somewhere in August. And this was a compatibility layer for running um, Windows games, DirectX 12 and Vulkan games on Steam on Linux platforms uh, using this compatibility layer. And it was built on top of Wine. So I don't know how much intermingling there is between Proton and Wine 4.0 for this Vulkan compatibility. I know they're probably built on the same basic stacks, but it would be nice to see uh, Proton updated to be Wine 4.0 based. And it's also kind of curious to see which one performs better now, Proton, or Wine 4.0. Anyways, let's get back to the Wine 4.0 announcement. We'll go to the initial announcement here. Uh, Wine is proud to announce that the stable release Wine 4.0 is now available. This release represents a year of development effort and over 6,000 individual changes. Don't worry, we're not going to go through all 6,000. We're only going to hit the top level bullet points here. It contains a large number of improvements that are listed in the release notes below. The main highlights are Vulkan support, Direct3D 12 support, game controller support, and high DPI on Android support. And you gotta admit those are all pretty seriously important things for supporting modern games on Linux especially Vulkan and Direct3D 12 support now there is a commingling relationship there in that um, the Direct3D 12 implementation is actually running on top of the wine layer oh, sorry on the top of the Vulkan layer as we will see in a second so let's drill down into the release notes and as always I will toss these links down below so you don't need to you know yeah you can peruse them at your own uh Ped peril? <laughs> uh, anyways, Direct3D 12, or Direct3D, initial support for Direct3D 12 is implemented. D initial. So take that uh, as this is the beginning steps. Think of that like L4, possibly beta. So don't expect Direct3D 12 to work perfectly. Direct3D 12 support requires the Vulkan 3D library and a Vulkan capable graphics card. So do be aware of that. If you want to run uh, Direct3D 12 games, you are going to need a Vulkan compatible graphics card. Now, we want to know something that's really insane in all this. For macOS support, macOS does not actually support Vulkan because Apple are Apple. In fact, they barely even support OpenGL anymore. They support their own layer called called Metal. And the cool thing is there is a product called Molten VK, which is a um, metal to, or sorry, Vulcan to metal translation layer. So what you've got now, if you run Wine, if you run a Direct3D 12 game on a Mac product, you're basically looking at running Direct3D 12 to a Vulcan translation layer to um, a, uh, let's see, Molten VK to Metal. And across the part, at some point in time, they also cross platforms. It's pretty insane the number of layers we can put in here while still getting reasonably good performance. Now, another thing you'll see here is a number of older features, like in previous graphics APIs, such as DirectX 10 and 11, we've seen additional compatibility or feature support, such as uh, multi-sample textures and views, uh, 1D textures, um, per sample fragment shading, uh, draws without render target views or depth stencil views, multiple viewport and scissor rectangles per draw, depth clipping control, and so on and so forth. And a lot of these things that we're scrolling through right now are all about better graphics compatibility with the older APIs too. And a lot of games, or most games actually still, that are written on Windows are going to be compatible with Direct3D 11. So this is going to make and broaden the compatibility on Linux devices in general anyways. So we also saw here the graphics changes right here. 
And there's the key part once again. A Vulkan driver is implemented using the host Vulkan libraries under X11 or Molten VK on Mac OS. Like I said, um, there is no Vulkan on Mac products, sadly enough. Um, a number of other changes, and then we get into a lot of other details. We see a whole bunch of um, smaller changes or lower level changes, uh, IO changes, uh, across the board and then again of incredible relevance to gamers is input device support hid or human input device basically game controllers uh, most game controller support on windows is actually through generic hid so that's why it's called that hid controllers are supported in x input and raw input apis and sdl drivers implemented to make sdl game controllers available through the hid interface so basically a lot more joystick support is going to be available in wine 4.0 which is also pretty sweet and then we got some internet and networking improvements some cryptology improvements text and font rendering improvements uh, audio improvements Mac OS improvements, Android improvements, ARM platform improvements, built-in application changes, internationalization, development tools built in, IDL compiler, .NET compatibility improvements, and so on and so forth. But obviously the big things in this 4.0 release, at least as is relevant to the world of games and game development, are definitely support for Vulkan, and through Vulkan, support for Direct3D 12, and support for controllers. So a pretty big development all around. And I would like to think that um, Wine 4.0 would also, again, result in an improvement for Proton, which is ultimately based on Wine as well. And it's kind of amazing that we can have these compatibility layers that run damn near at full speed so that hopefully at some point in time, our platform of choice really doesn't matter all that much. And the monopolies are broken and you can just play on whatever the hell platform you want. And it's projects like Wine that are really leading that forward. Uh, now, again, and I mentioned this in the end of the Proton video, there is a possible downside here too, because as these compatibility or emulation <coughs> layers um, improve, the need or the desire to de develop for or target niche platforms, and I'm sorry if you're a Linux developer, but frankly, you're a very small percentage of the market. So as a developer, you kind of sit there and go, well, if I can just target Windows and then like through emulation get Linux and Mac users, why would I bother targeting those other platforms? And that is kind of the trade-off or the downside to these kind of compatibility layers. They do make those platforms a little bit less uh, valuable to target for developers. So it's just not worth putting the resources in when you can just develop for the one platform and have these compatibility layers take care of the rest. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword, but I think for the most part, and a lot of people that choose to use Linux and to a lesser degree Mac OS are choosing it for different reasons and just want the ability to game. And this is giving them that. And on top of that, every one of these compatibility layers also enhances your ability to do more than just games. So sometimes, um, you know, some of our graphics tools or game engines and so on are also relying on these APIs. So as the compatibility layer gets better, those tools will also run better through these tools such as Wine. So again, for game developers and gamers specifically in Linux and slightly less degree to Mac OS, pretty big development here to see um, Wine 4.0 release. Definitely a cool move and it's nice to see. And now I will be interested to see, and if any of you guys have actually got experience out there, if you run Proton versus Wine 4.0, I'd be really curious to hear which one performs better. But all the same, pretty cool announcement and uh, yeah, good stuff. All right. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.